The International Monetary Fund, IMF, yesterday applauded recent economic reforms such as fuel subsidy removal and unification of the exchange rates initiated by President Bola Tinubu, noting that the measures were a pathway towards stronger and inclusive growth. However, the multilateral institution revised Nigeria's growth prospects downwards to 2.9% for 2023, a decline of 0.3% from the 3.2% it had predicted for the country in its July World Economic Outlook, WEO. This was just as Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wale Edun, yesterday expressed concern over the rising debt service costs globally, saying the situation has forced the federal government to focus more on stimulating domestic investments while also encouraging foreign investments. In addition, the IMF also lowered its 2024 projection for Nigeria to 3.1% from the 3.2% it had earlier projected for 2024. The IMF disclosed this during the launch of the World Economic Outlook at its ongoing annual meetings in Marrakech, Morocco, yesterday. Arise correspondent Inkechi Nanna reports. The global economy is limping along, not sprinting. The International Monetary Fund's updated World Economic Outlook shows a slowing trend in global growth with estimates pointing to a decline from 3.5% in 2022 to 3% in 2023 and a further decline to 2.9% in 2024. These projections linger below the historical average of 3.8% and the outlook for 2024 has dipped by 0.1 percentage point since July. The global economy continues to recover from the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, showing remarkable resilience, yet growth remains slow and uneven. Important divergences are appearing. The slowdown is more pronounced in advanced economies and in emerging markets and developing economies. The IMF highlights that only the United States is on a path to surpass its pre-pandemic growth levels, with GDP expected to rise by 2.1% in 2023 and 1.5% 1 in 2024. On the other hand, Euro area countries and China find themselves in a challenging position due to the ongoing war in Ukraine and an unprecedented property crisis. It's particularly concerning for Germany, which is now anticipated to face a deeper recession than initially thought. Turning our attention to Nigeria, growth is expected to decelerate from 3.3% in 2022 to 2.9% in 2023. For Nigeria in particular, we have um, a growth forecast that goes from 3.3% this year to 2.9% next year before going up to 3.1% in 2024. There's a downward revision for this year. Uh, partly this is because of the demonetization, the high inflation, the shocks to agriculture and hydrocarbon output. That's coming on top of those external headwinds. I would also add that President uh, Tinubu has moved quickly with important reforms, including ending uh, the fuel subsidies and unifying the official exchange rate. We welcome these initial bold reforms because we see them as paving the way towards stronger and inclusive growth. This slowdown is attributed to the adverse impact of high inflation on consumption. While there's a measure of relief on the horizon, the global headline inflation set to steadily decline from its peak last year. The forecast indicates a decrease to 5.9% in the fourth quarter of 2023, and further drops below 5% are expected in 2024. Between June and September, oil prices have increased by about 27% on the back of extended supply cuts from OPEC plus countries, before falling back more recently by about 8%. From the IMF projections, a combination of pandemic fallout, geopolitical tensions and challenges like inflation control, physical policy shifts are hindering economic recovery. The fund says adaptation and strategic planning is crucial moving forward. Kichi Nana, Arise News. Thank you, Kichi. I think Marrakesh looks good on you. Uh, Rufai.
Yeah. The IMF projections, growth projections for Nigeria this year and next year. At first, I'd like to say kudos to the Moroccan authorities that did a yeoman job to still ensure that Marrakesh continued, despite the fact that only a couple of weeks ago we had a devastating earthquake out of that region. That's what leadership is truly about, you know, rallying your troops, rallying your people, and still going ahead to deliver on the much needed goals. On Marrakech, I mean, there's nothing they have said that we don't know. Growth projection of 2.9 uh, now, those are revised figures. For 2024, growth projection of 3.1, those are revised figures. For Nigeria to be able to do well, we need to be able to grow double digits. If we don't grow double digits, at least six, seven, eight, nine percent. What are the things that will make us grow? Our economy, largely dependent on crude oil. Only today, the Senate was talking about the fact that we lost 2.3 trillion to crude oil thefts. We've not been able to nip that in the bud. It's not you and I that are still in the crew. We don't have the capacity to be able to perpetrate that kind of heist. Government must solve that problem because most of our forex coming from there. Secondly, we know we are encumbered as regards our forex. We have a backlog of about seven billion to be able to pay. Our reserves are not in any good shape. Then we need to be able to get money in to be able to defend our currency. So when they talk about the policies of Tinubu, yes. But before you implement policies, you need to be able to holistically look at the effect of the policies. That the president did not do. And we've said that at most, yeah. We've said that over and over again. So take, for instance, for before you should float the currency, you should have money to defend. We didn't have an arsenal to defend the currency. I, I gave an illustration this morning. I say it was just like back in the days when you needed to use a certain malaria pill that was itchy on the body but they will tell you to use pyritine with it, sort of like an athlete's to me, to reduce the itchiness. So it's just like you, you know that malaria pill will itch you, you use it without using the athlete's to me. And then you start to itch, and they say, oh, why didn't you use it? You say, oh, that's exactly what we did. We floated the currency without having things to defend. Now we are running everywhere to look for money. We've gone to Afrexim, nothing has come out of there. But now probably we are running to IMF. Just like on the failed subsidy removal. Yeah, good point. But you need to have a transition phase, which we didn't employ. No CNG, the refineries are not kicked in and all of that. So these are the problems that they've also itemized. And today we are reeling from it because the weak will suffer what they must. So where's the solution in all of this? Yeah, the IMF will talk, will give projection and all of that. For number one solution, we need to look for money to be able to at least clear a certain level of our forex encumbrances to give some leeway on our currency because we cannot continue this currency slide. Nigeria currency is one of the worst performing in the world. You know what it means for a currency in the space of three or four months to lose about 40% of its value? That's where we are today. So we need to be able to stop that slide. Secondly, put in place those reforms, CNG and some other reforms like that. The refineries, when are they going to come on board? The private refinery, when is it going to come on board? Accelerate all those things. And if we can do those things and really take a proper fiscal haircut and be transparent in all of this. So I'm projecting Q1, Q2 next year. At least we should have a leeway. But this economic slide must stop. And that's what pretty much the IMF is saying. Vis-a-vis -vis also the economy of the world as we speak today. All right. Okay. The last time IMF had its uh, conference in Africa, was in 1973 in Kenya. Since 1973, uh, IMF, which was, you know, every after three years, uh, a conference outside Washington, a summit outside Washington, had not been to Africa. So in 50 years, this is the first time IMF will be holding its uh, annual summit in Africa. So its presence in Marrakech, uh, Morocco, this year, was some symbolic significance. The uh, meeting in uh, Marrakech was supposed to have been held in 2021, but it was postponed uh, because of COVID-19 and the situation of the world at that particular time. But this year, despite the, uh, you know, the earthquake in Marrakech, uh, the Moroccan authorities said, oh, they were prepared, they will still go ahead and host it. So in more than one sense, you know, the current uh, summit of the IMF in Marrakech, in Africa, whose significance, symbolically, 50 years after.
to give you know the developing world, I guess, from Africa, a sense of uh, belonging. Now I see that the papers have been uh, you know giving, trying to give a positive ring uh, to some of the outcomes, some of the statements made at our meeting and also by the division chief. Uh, but we need to look at two things. One, IMF is praising for subsidy removal. This has been IMF peel for Nigeria for years. IMF is also praising the harmonization of the foreign exchange regime, saying that you know this is uh, these are very good moves. So it's like Nigeria taking IMF prescription. What do you expect IMF to say? The reality, however, on the ground is that the first subsidy remover, uh, while economies, IMF, neoliberal economies, ins insist that it is good. Nigerians are suffering on account of it. Inflation has gone up. We, the people, were feeling the brunt of it. Secondly, the unification of the foreign exchange regime. Even those who removed that, uh, who, who uh, introduced that policy, they are, they are uncomfortable because, as uh, the Financial Times has pointed out, it didn't look as if you know, Nigeria gave enough thought uh, to the implications. And hence, here we are today, uh, running from Afrizim Bank to FinTechs, uh, trying to address the supply uh, problem in order to address the slide of the Naira, which is depreciating at a very fast rate. Yesterday, we had an economist on the program, uh, Chilewa Adibajo, who told us that, in fact, what we're facing is not inflation, it's stagflation. And that that is the reality we face. But of course, IMF has uh, you know, uh, praised its own prescriptions. Now, beyond that, the same IMF in Marrakech revised Nigeria's growth rate from 3.2%, which they stated in their July World Economic Outlook. They've revised it downwards to 2.9% for the year 2023. Okay, are we supposed to jubilate about that? 2.9% percent growth rate. When in fact, the objective had always been that Nigeria should have double digit growth. And that it is double digit growth that can be to our benefit. We are celebrating, we are getting excited over 3.2, uh, 2.9%. Uh, this simply means that look, there's no growth anywhere within the economy. And the evidence is uh, rich large. Number three, the IMF projection for next year, again, is 3.1% for Nigeria. They had originally put growth for 2024 for Nigeria at uh, uh, 34 They've also revised that down to 3.1%. Uh, In other words, you know, all the indicators don't look positive for us. So it's not a thing that we keep jubilating and keep saying, oh, somebody from IMF has made a statement uh, that there's uh, a possibility of growth. Okay, the growth we're looking for for 2024, according to their projection, are we looking for 3.1? Even if we move from 2.9% to 3.1. So that's why the economy is a major thing that the Nigerian government has to worry about. And instructively, Wale Edu, the coordinating minister of the economy, pointed out the issue about debt. Nigeria's, service, uh, Nigeria's uh, debt profile is over 87 trillion naira. We are using up to about 98% of government revenue to, to service debt. Okay, the uh, debt management office says it's still sustainable because it's below the standard, below the uh, African uh, uh, average. But how do we address it? While I don't, uh, in Morocco, offered an opinion, said, oh, we'll be uh, concentrating on domestic investments rather than foreign in, in investments. Okay, is there an enabling environment in Nigeria to deal with this? Yesterday, again, I go back to Tiliwa Adibajo. He was referring to Kadoso, who is in charge of the uh, CBN. Uh, he was referring to uh, Bagudu, who is in charge of uh, 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 planning and, uh, and budget, and also uh, while you're doing the uh, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. Now, what are the options available to the Nigerian government to address this debt burden, which was a major issue at this uh, uh, IMF summit in Morocco? 
about debt sustainability, particularly for developing uh, countries that are facing a very serious uh, crisis. So if anything, I think that the economic team of President Tinubu should take that uh, revision down to 2.9%, not as a commendation of the policies that have been uh, 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 introduced by this administration in the last five months, but as a wake-up call to show that all is not well around here. And rather than listen to your IMF and their prescriptions and their uh, analysis, they should listen more to the ordinary Nigerians. Ordinary Nigerians are saying, we are suffering. So all these uh, uh, figures, uh, 2.9, 3.1, 3.2, they are meaningless. If they do not translate into prosperity for the people, a better investment environment, not just for the domestic investment that uh, uh, Wally Edmund was referring to, but also for foreign investments. I want to be told by the uh, National Bureau of Statistics that in two quarters this year, 28 states out of 36 and the FCT have not attracted any investment. Some states have even attracted out of the uh, eight that attracted anything, $25,000. Money that uh, Rufai here can just uh, donate to a girlfriend uh, to use for weekend. Is that what we'll be celebrating? I rest my case. All right, Dr. Bati, thank you very much. And I, I don't know why it was only Rufai that you mentioned could spend that amount of money. Please, speak into my life too. <laughs> okay. I didn't know you were so rich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, just to um, continue in terms of just a few things um, that has been said already by Dr. Bati and Rufai. Um, indeed, the headlines celebrate the fact that the IMF have praised uh, Tinubu, President Tinubu's reforms, you know, describing it as bold and fair enough to him because. In terms of the removal of fuel subsidy and unification of the exchange rates, this is something the IMF and the World Bank have pushed for consistently, saying that it would catalyze um, growth rates in the economy and was needed for critical um, you know, economic growth in Nigeria. So no surprises at all that they have praised this move. However, going further into the story, it talked about the fact that they downgraded uh, the growth, projected growth rate for Nigeria for this year and for 2024. But one of the things I'd like to emphasize, which um, Dr. Bati had talked about as well, was what the Minister for uh, Finance and Coordinating um, Coordinate, um, Minister for the Economy had said with regards to attracted foreign direct investment. In fact, he had mentioned, he had quoted the MD of the World Bank saying that he had mentioned that the, the richer nations have the money. Whilst the developing nations have the opportunities, investment opportunities um, to attract this money. So it's how to bridge the gap between the two. And this is what Nigeria should be focusing on, perhaps, in the next few months in order to show up its um, growth rate. A number of analysis has gone on to how we can attract foreign direct investment. The first question, now we had an interview, um, a conversation about this a few days ago, two days ago, where we asked, is Nigeria ready? to attract foreign direct investment. Yesterday, the roadshow um, spearheaded by the US uh, Agency for International Development, U USAID, was, um, had started the investment roadshow saying that they would have about 12 executives from the United States coming into Nigeria. And we're going to be looking especially at the build sector. And hopefully there'll be that marriage between um, investors and um, opportunities here in Nigeria. Analysts have talked about the fact that perhaps Nigeria should look at and leverage its, its, um, its potentials, its opportunities, especially in the area of um, cheap, um, well, accessible, let me put it that way, labor. We have the numbers. And so investors, one of the things investors are looking for in, in, are places where they can actually, you know, uh, leverage the number of people, people that we have. So what we should do is to be able to compete favorably with countries like Vietnam, where they are taking their business to countries like um, other parts in Africa, Ghana, where some of these investors are looking to, even on the African continent. We talked about um, government policies, fiscal policies, tax um, rates, repatriation of funds for investors. We looked at um, the um, other um, um, policies to ensure that we make the nation an enabling, or we create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive and not, you know, not kill businesses. We looked at um, provision of infrastructure as well in Nigeria. We looked at um, stability in government as well. When it comes to investments, one of the key ethos of that is trust. 
we have to build trust enough to assure or to encourage investors to see that, one, their money is safe here. Two, when they invest their money here, when it's time to rep repatriate profits, they will be able to do that easily. Three, they will not be belabored by corrupt practices to hamper their businesses here in Nigeria. These are some of the things that the government should be addressing if we're going to be talking about attracting foreign direct investment in Nigeria. And so, as we had, um, I think it was Professor Bongo, yes, who came on the show to talk about the fact that he wasn't quite enthused about the roadshow happening because Nigeria just wasn't ready at the moment. However, there are some ways that some quick wins and some key things that the government can begin to do. Yes, they can be praised for, you know, um, for certain reforms that the president has made in the economy. However, the implementation is what has been criticized a number of times in terms of how it has been handled without appropriate measures taken to cushion the effect of these, um, of these outcomes. So perhaps the minister in the conversations in Marrakesh should address those issues and more than that, come back home and let's think and put in policies to how, as to how to make Nigeria the attractive destination for foreign investment. There are many sectors. Beyond the obvious sectors in the built sector, we have, the, we have talked about the creative economy. And so it's, it, it, it may be a great time to then ask about what the Minister for Arts, Culture and the Creative Economy has in terms of her plans to make the industry attractive for foreign investments. We have movies being shot in different parts in South Africa, some um, going to Ghana, Liberia is putting its foot forward. What is Nigeria doing to ensure that investors see this place as a destination, an attractive destination for investors?